So my name is Jan Zopp. I'm, I'm in charge of media at the World Economic Forum. And we have with us today uh, Nicole Newham, who is the producer of Coco Films um, in the US, producer for, for this film. Um, we have Tashka Yabanat <laughs> Yavanava, um, who is the chief of the Brazilian Amazon Rainforest um, Tribe. And we have um, Bushanu, who is the first um, chairman of um, a tribe in, in the Amazon. Um, and she's the main character, actually, who's telling the story of this film. Um, so maybe we start with how this film came together um, and how the, the idea um, came to life. Uh, Nicole, can you tell us a little bit um, how, how this all happened? So um, uh, two years ago um, in Davos, um, the artist uh, Lynette Walworth directed a film that I produced, another VR film called Collisions. Um, and that film tells the story of an indigenous man in Western Australia who um, witnessed uh, a British atomic test in the 1950s when he was pre-contact. Um, and we had the privilege to, to premiere it at Davos and then take it around the world. And when we were showing it in Oxford, um, we had the opportunity to see Tashka whom we'd met in Oxford a couple of years prior, um, and we um, and we really wanted to show him collisions and show him virtual reality. And Tashka was interested in virtual reality, having used film as a medium to um, to tell stories about the Yawanawa and share um, the Yawanawa culture and spirituality with the world in the past. Um, in fact, it was. It's an embarrassing story for me. The first time I met Tashka, um, it was with a group of Sundance filmmakers, and, um, and we were asked to introduce ourselves to him, and we all went around the table and, and spoke very slowly and, and told him how honored we were to meet him, and when he started to speak, he said, yeah, well, it's really cool to meet you guys. The first time I made a film, it was with Joaquin Phoenix when he came back to the community, and, um, and I suddenly had this feeling of how, how much we make assumptions about how separate we are from indigenous people when really we're, we're all so close. So anyway, we had the opportunity to show collisions to Tashka and, um, and maybe you can just uh, talk about what, what you saw and why, why this project sparked. Okay. I can do in Yawanawa or Portuguese, <laughs> <laughs> Spanish or English. <laughs> what, which one you prefer? If you, if you could do it in English, I think that, 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 that would be helpful. <laughs> If you don't mind, yeah, Portuguese, okay. otherwise works okay. also. Yeah, uh, well, my name is Tashka Yawanawa. I mean, the Yawanawa chief and leader. Uh, the Yawanawa people live in the Yawanawa territory. It's located in the state of Acre, in the Brazil Amazon rainforest. We are about uh, 1,250 people. Uh, we live in the land about 200,000 hectares, and the Yawanawa land is almost 99% preserved. Uh, yeah, uh, continue as uh, Nicole was saying. When I met, actually, I met uh, uh, Lynette, and she started talking about this technology. I didn't, I really do not understand. On the first, I think I, I met her the first time in Skull World Forum was in 2011. And she had this idea about VR, about the technology. And I said, okay, okay, good, great idea. And I back to the community, I say, you know, I have this amazing woman, so I inspired to tell me thing. I didn't know what really is that, but I'm going back to meet her again and to see what's happened. And later on, in 2014, yeah, mm -hmm. we met again in Scored Forum. And she was so happy to show me the documentary that she did with the um, Aboriginal people from Australia. I mean, I saw the document documentary. Uh, touched me so much because was beyond of what we used to see in documentary. 
uh, myself, my wife, and a friend, we produced a documentary of the 51 minutes in 2006. They show about the Yawanawa people and how Yawanawa we born from 21st century, the cultural, spiritual manifestation, the whole thing. I, I call linear. But when I saw the VR, I was beyond of that. I was feeling, I said, wow, this looks like when we, in our community, when you drink uni. Uni is a medicine. I think some of you know about ayahuasca. Who's know about ayahuasca? Great, four people. Who <laughs> have who have a drink ayahuasca? Nobody. I'm so sad. <laughs> okay, ayahuasca is a mix of two plant, one leaf, one wine, and you, you cook about two three hours. You have a tea. Uh, this tea, indigenous people from the all Amazon base call the tea of the spirits. People from the Andes call wine of the soul. When you drink the ayahuasca, you open your consciousness for what the real life is. No fake, no mask. And you real can listen to nature and the nature talk to you because everything will connect. It's very profound. Well, when I saw the sunglass with the original people, I was wow. I turned to Lynette and said, Lynette, I have a, a lot of vision with Uni Ayahuasca, and uh, you think we can do something? He said, Tashka, today we can use technology for do anything we want it. I said, great, I'm into that now. And later on, uh, I back to the community and I say, guys, I saw the documentary. I, also, I bring it, the sunglass here. Let's make a session to see the. And I put on the, the guys, and it was so funny. They were so scared, like they were screaming. Some of them just lay down on the floor. Like it's an amazing session we have with them. And they turned to me and say, You think we can do. It's very interesting because the same thing I, I talked with Nicole, people come to me and say, you think we can send a message to this sunglass to like as a Ayahuasca vision? I say, wow, that's what she promised me we can do. As people say, wow, we are into that. That was amazing, working together in collaboration because was not something imposed, but uh, something discussion with the community first, and people say, wow, let's embrace this vision here as a tools to touch people's heart. Many people don't have opportunity to come to visit us. They don't have idea about the nature about the biodiversity, about this whole beautiful, important thing we have here. People not gonna respect what they didn't know. And uh, what I, I, I'm saying that because I think every person after see Avavuna, who somebody saw the documentary, Okay. Mm -hmm. I think after you saw the Avana, you changed your perspective about indigenous spirituality, about the cosmology, about the nature, because the, the message is right there. When I saw it for the first time in Los Angeles, before we go to Sundance, this touched me so hard. I, I spent the whole night dreaming with that, how the team make it so great, so accurate way. Like when you put a sunglass, look like you have a drink of uni. It's open doors for you. You can feel hot, cold, happy, scared. 
when you finish, you feel touched by your heart. And uh, that's uh, something really change. Change because first, we all, we have a heart, we have a soul, no matter, I, I have this friend, uh, he's for, he ex-president for the for country that we have anymore, somewhere. I met him, Sandra, I forgot her name, this guy. Oh. He, yeah, he was in final with me. Yes, um, the president of the Pacific Islands. Yeah. He former president. Yeah, he says something, say, everybody in this world have indigenous blood. Who don't have, maybe they have alienigenous blood. <laughs> or they come from somewhere. <laughs> something like that. Everybody have. And uh, other day I was flying by helicopter over the Yawanawa land. I see this big green carpet. I say, wow, I think in the Bible when they say about the paradise, why well, just a, a metaphor, the real paradise, the garden is here. Because it's so beautiful when you see that with love and respect. I think other people was in helicopter see that they see other kind of things. But I see a lot of these things. It's because we all, as I say today, we all live in a global village, in global community. We live in the same planet. I think our Vina is send a message to the people. Each one of us can do something because we all make difference. Tashka um, Ming. Because I think also what is important is to understand a little bit the story. Of course, it's it's very important to understand mm -hmm. how this technology enabled to, to to tell the story. But what is the story? And w without explaining the whole the whole story, I think what what is also unique is that's uh, a story about um, um, transmission, the transmission um, also from a shaman to a shaman, but um, for the first time to to a female shaman. Um, and I think uh, that's why. Um, Having um, Ushanu here is also um, very um, important. And it I, I think we have a problem. She can't hear the translation. translation. The translation doesn't work. Okay. okay. That because she didn't. Yeah. Very specific in Spanish. Thank you. Somebody can help her. Second. But otherwise, Tashka, maybe you can just ask okay. her the uh, ask her the question. Okay. Um, very simply, what, what was the experience for her? And, and I think it would be interesting to know for us, once she's, she saw it, what did she feel? What, was, she, sure. was she surprised how much that technology managed yeah. to transmit that story, which is not an easy story to tell? O documentário pela primeira vez era exatamente o que você esperava ou qual foi a tua experiência de poder passar essa linguagem porque não é fácil passar uma história assim é, para essa linguagem sim. pode falar mais perto do microfone aqui esse documentário que uh -huh, eu vi sim, sim. eu senti foi muito muito forte muito lindo ao mesmo tempo, é, senti como se eu estivesse é, dentro da força da medicina. E, ao mesmo tempo, senti como se um, um sonho sendo realizado, né, como se a gente... Entra, tem momentos que a gente está dentro da força da medicina é, ou tendo uma visões ou dentro dos sonhos que a gente quer compartilhar com as pessoas e a gente não consegue realmente mostrar ou a gente não consegue compartilhar exatamente como é porque
because there are so many details, so many things that come from the spirits. And when I saw the documentary, I saw something really beautiful and special. I noticed that we can share these things all together at the same time. So with one person, two people, three people, uh, we can all share this, this moment. And it's such a beautiful moment. This documentary shows a little bit when we were traveling, we were at that event and someone told us, now I'm going to go inside your mind. I'm going to watch the documentary and go inside your mind. And I said, well, <laughs> that's what this is about, more or less. Because it's as if we are connected with spirits. People must have a very strong mind and must have a lot of awareness. Otherwise, you go crazy. Because it's a lot of information. It's There are so many voices, so many spirits. And this documentary shows a bit of that, of what we are going through. It shows this power, this strength. It's, as a, it's like a... We travel within force, within light, and it's so beautiful. So I was really glad and happy that this documentary managed to show a bit of what we see, of what we live in this moment when we do this work. the right moment because the story that, that uh, one sees is, is that story of transmission and apparently it happened exactly when you started the project. Like, so, so was it just luck or was it, was it the right meeting at the right moment? You mean the story of the, tra the gender transition? Yes, the so, so the story that, that yeah. Tata, the, the shaman, actually was transmitting this at that moment and you, you were able to capture that. I actually think um, I think the the story of uh, of of Hushahu being trained and and the shift in gender equality that started to happen in the community happened 12 or 15 years prior, um, but the timing that that is so extraordinary that it kind of still takes our breath away is how right at the moment that the film was coming out at Sundance and Davos was the moment that the world. Um, at large started to wrestle with gender equality in a new way. And I think what we need, what we need in the world is, um, is a vision of uh, how cultures can change to accommodate um, gender parity and how, how even things that seem really intransigent and really stuck actually have the capacity to, to shift. And that's what the Yawanawa experienced. And I think um, perhaps the most moving thing to me um, in experiencing the film at Davos was to show it to extremely powerful women who had fought to be the first of something in their field, you know, the first major CEO of a large company of a particular kind, or we showed it to a woman who was the first female pi fighter pilot in the United States. And for those women, it was extremely emotional to, to watch this story, and I, I, I believe it, it is because even though they fought the same fight that Hu Shahu fought to, to break a taboo and, and, and become something different, that didn't necessarily mean that the culture shifted and things were necessarily more equitable or people in the culture at large started treating women differently. Um, but in, for the Yawanala, that's what happened. Um, and so Hu Shahu's story, I believe, gives us um, the capacity to, to, to see something that, um, that we can't see. I mean, first of all, which Tashka always intended, it, it allows us to see the world the way the Yawanawa see it, uh, which is different, but it also gives us the story of hope. And that's what I think um, 
art can do. And so even though it's a very technological project, it's filled with um, spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that what was so, such a um, consequential meeting was of not just you seeing the technology, but you meeting Lynette, who mm -hmm. when is an amazing artist. And when she got to uh, the community, the Yawanala, she said that was the first time she had ever felt truly seen, that she felt like people were looking at her and they were seeing her soul, you know? So um, she was a, the virtual reality was the technology that enabled this to happen, but Lynette was the kind of spiritual connection, you know? And all those things coming together, I think, is what's so, mm -hmm. it's been so extraordinary. Yeah. You know? so, so Tashka, before seeing virtual reality, do you think it would have been even possible to, to make people experience in a way what, what you are able to see. Is, is that the moment where you saw this technology, you thought, okay, this, this will make it work? I was immediately when I saw that, I said, that's it. That I was looking for for so many mm. years ago. And, uh, you know, and uh, because uh, actually the Wavana give to the people the opportunity that never been there, watching few parts of that. Uh, one thing is people go to the community and they have experienced it. We call Vivenza Yawanawa, like living as a Yawanawa. We receive a lot of people all over the world that go to the Yawanawa. We have uh, this annual Yawanawa celebration week. But people need to go there. Uh, to go there is not so easy. You go for flight up to Rio Branco. You get about, when the road is good, is about eight hours by truck. If not, about 12 hours on the road. You sleep in the municipality called Taruaca. From there, you get about three hours by, by truck again. One is in the um, in the Amazon. We have to see the rain. It's not rain. <laughs> now it's raining. Time is raining. The the water comes up. You get about six, seven hours by canoe. If not, you get ten, eleven hours by canoe. It's you difficult to get there. It's very, we live in very we call deep mm. part of the Amazon. But through the technology today, I say Hufaho. It's possible people can see, can travel it there, and be in touch with the Yawanawa. You know, uh, our intention is, is to awaken these people, mm. give this opportunity. It's like a window, you yeah. know, give opportunity to people to see that. Thank you. I, we don't have much time left, but I wanted to ask maybe uh, w one more question <laughs> personally to Ushanu. Um, if she thinks that she will be able to transmit to other women um, what she has learned. Um, and, and if there is more interest maybe now in the tribe from, from, from girls and women um, to know what a shaman does. Está perguntando para ti o que, que você aprendeu dessa experiência e que poderá. Eu. Tudo que eu aprendi. Well, everything I've learned throughout this process that I've been through. all the visions, all the drawings, all the inspiration I've brought, all of them have been shared with Yanawa women. And not just with Yanawa women, they have been shared with women in general. I do work with women precisely to share and tell them it's not because we're women that we don't have the ability 
or that we don't have this the strength. Everything that comes our way are challenges to test us. And what I lived, what I went through was a challenge. And now I take this message to all women, not just Yanawa women, but women in general. Whenever I meet them in my work and in my life, for me, it's as if I had a mission in life, which is to share with these women everything I've learned. And I want to help even further, not just women, also men. Because in my tribe, not all men are like my brother. Many leaders and other men, they were angry at me because I faced this huge challenge and I faced them in a way. So not just um, sharing this with women, but also with men and with children. I think this is a mission in my life on earth, which is to share everything I've learned. And this has made me, st has made me stronger and it will really help women. message to, to end this session today. Uh, thank you both for coming here. Thank you, Nicole, for, for making also this uh, film available. So if you didn't have the chance yet, hopefully you get the chance to watch it. I can only recommend it. So thank you very much for being here today with us. Thank you, too. Thank you.